Bradley coming to you from www.scottbradley.name. And in this Evernote Scott video, I'm going to share with you a, set a setup if you are a college student or if you are attending a university. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I would set up my Evernote if I was still going to school or I was going to school or I was studying a topic at a university. This is going to be really valuable for you and I'm really excited to show you. So let's get started. What I would end up doing, the very first thing I would do is to create a stack within Evernote. And if you guys don't know what a stack is, um, I would highly recommend that you go and watch my 11 features video. That annotation is going to show up here for you to click. Um, but after you watch that, make sure you come back to this video so you can finish. So here's what I would do. What I would do is break down my notebooks by year and semester. So as you see over here, I have freshman semester fall, freshman semester spring. And following this model, I would also have sophomore semester fall, sophomore semester spring, junior semester fall, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, within each one of these stacks, what I would end up doing is creating notebooks under the stack. So for instance, it would be freshman semester fall is the stack name. Then I would have notebook name would be class name one. So for instance, this would be history 101. You know, this one, class two could be philosophy 101. Class three could be, um, you know, maybe you're doing uh, religious studies. It could be, you know, studies of Islam or studies of Christianity or studies of fill in your blank. Now, with this setup, what I would end up doing is within each notebook, um, obviously this is only going to apply primarily for classes who, um, you know, you can type your notes. Um, and in some cases, if you plan on taking your notes for math-based classes or more analytical-based classes where you're going to need charts and graphs and whatnot, and you have outside applications that are going to forward into Evernote, those notes, whether you're taking them on a tablet, like using an application such as Pen Ultimate, or if you're using the LiveScribe pen with a LiveScribe notebook, um, you know, I was just assuming when I was creating this that I would want just, you know, come in, log into my Evernote, the lecture starts, and I would start typing. But like I said, if you're using a tablet or if you're using a LiveScribe notebook or whatever notebook, things that you're doing for your math-based classes and or your um, more analytical chart-based classes, um, I would create notebooks and then what I would do is once I'd finish the notes in a LiveScribe, you know, I'd probably forward them to my Evernote and then drag them and drop them in here. And the key here, as you guys know, it's all about chronological order. So, you know, the bottom most note will be the first note in, you know, from the class and the top most note will be the most recent, um, depending on how you, you know, modify your view options, which you can modify down here by title, descending, date created, oldest first, newest first, blah, 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 blah. So, again, going just back to it, make each notebook within this stack the class name and have the title of every note within here be the date of the lecture. And then you have your note content here. So let's just say, for instance, you are sitting in History 101. You click the History 101. You create the new note up here. You title it, you know, let's say it's January 25th, 14. And if you wanted to be super detailed, you can even put the day. It's not necessary. Then I would just start the note content here and the, and the whatever. You know, if you found that you were creating diagram-based stuff, maybe the way that you can modify that would be, we all have cell phones, we all have iPhones, Android phones that can take pictures. What I would end up doing is, is if, if I did create a graphic or a picture of some sort in my notes that I physically couldn't write in this note area, what I would end up doing is taking a picture of that with my cell phone, emailing that picture into my Evernote, and as you know, if you've watched my 11 features video, you can email into Evernote via a text message, via an email. And to find that email address up here, all you have to do is click the little arrow that points down, click your account settings, and that email is going to be right here for you to access. Um, and anything that I send to this email, it will end up, let me go back here, uh, back here now. It will end up 
in your default notebook. Now I've renamed my default notebook inbox um, just because that's kind of just makes sense for me. But this, this notebook in and of itself will be titled the screen name that you choose at the beginning when you're setting up your Evernote account. So in order to rename it, you just click this little arrow down, click rename, etc. So as you guys see, you know, you break it down by semester and year. Now, taking it one step further, um, obviously for each class you're going to have multiple notes within each one of your class name notebooks and you're probably saying, okay Scott, um, I know I'm going to have lots of notes in multiple different areas, do you recommend a tagging structure for each one of these notes that you're going to create? And as a matter of fact, I do. So. If you want to do this, it's not necessary, but if you want to kind of create another layer of organization to make things easier and searchable, what I would end up doing is creating a tagging structure. And as you know, if you've watched my other videos, I recommend that the tags that you create, you want to make sure that you only use tags for specific notebooks where content resides. And what I mean by that is that, let's say that you create 100 notes and you make your tags non-notebook specific. So for instance, let's say that one of your tags was social media, one of your tags was, um, you know, a like something that describes a specific thing you're studying, let's just say chemistry, or, you know, another thing could be, um, you know, but I'm um, just thinking out loud here, uh, calculus or whatever. But the problem is, is that when you start creating those tags without them you knowing what notebook they're connected to, then it can get messy where you can have, you know, hundreds of tags and there may be like one or two tags that only are tagged with one note and then it becomes inefficient. So what I would recommend is that create your tags where as you see down here, you know, this is just for examples, um, fun is the tag that I, the, um, the three word um, thing that I use for a tag connected to the notes within the funnel stack notebook. So in a sense, you want to make your first, you know, part of your tag fresh for freshman, soft for sophomore, June for junior, sen, sen for senior. And then what I would do is create the specific thing that you want to be tagging within the freshman year. So for instance, let's say, you know, going back to our example here, say this is our history notes, you know, history note, date of lecture, you know, history class, date of lecture, contents in here. And there were specific topics that you were, you know, taking notes on in here. And at the end of the lecture, you want to be able to find this stuff faster and easier what you would do is you'd come up here and you'd create your tags. Now, because it's in the freshman year stack, you, cr you put freshman and let's say it was on the Revolutionary War. You do a fresh Revolutionary War, you know, taking it to the Aristotle thing. Let's say you're in class name two. You're, this is your philosophy class and you do the same kind of thing with the note up here. You pop it out and let's say your lecture was on Aristotle. Then you go, you know, you create your tag, you go fresh, Aristotle, boom, it's there. So, you know, it, this allows you to find the content that you want in the search box based on specific tags within specific notes, for specific tags on specific notes within specific notebooks. <laughs> it's a lot in, <laughs> a lot to say, but um, I just want to help you out the best way I can. So. That is how I would set up each of my stacks within each semester for each year. So that's kind of like your first phase of this Evernote setup. Then the next, the, the notebook that I would also recommend that you create is kind of like a reference-based other school notes notebook. And um, with that, I would create these specific notes. I'd put my class schedule, so you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, let's say, you know, you have calculus, you know, on calculus at 8 a.m., history 101 at 10 p.m. or 10 a.m., and, uh, you know, let's just say uh, philosophy at, you know, 12 p.m. So this is more like a reference guide for yourself. And, you know, I know that as you kind of get into the rhythm of going to class, it, you kind of remember it. But if you wanted to put it here, you could. I would also, based on the fact that you're going to get your syllabus at the beginning of every class, 
I would then basically take some time on, um, and I don't know why this option one is here, sorry about that. Um, I would take some time and put, you know, all the midterms and paper due dates for that semester. Now, this other school notes notebook is always going to be modified on a semester basis because obviously this information will change. So, you know, one of your, your first action items that you can do when setting this up is come in and get all your syllabus, take an hour or two hours, whatever it does. I mean, you may even do it faster. Come in, set up this stuff, get things rolling, put your dates in here so you know, you know, rather than having to go find the syllabus or the paper or whatever, you can literally just open up your Evernote, click this notebook and go, oh yeah, that's right. And then you're gonna probably have it on your calendar as a reminder in your iPhone or your Android phone or whatever phone that you use, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I would do midterm dates, paper dates, and the final you know, test dates. Next, next thing I would do is create another note for professor office hour times and emails and office location, et cetera. So very simply, you know, professor name, email, office location, and maybe another thing that I would do is put the class name. You know, so it's chemistry 101, professor name, email, professor office location, professor office hours. And so it's kind of like rather than again going having to go to your syllabus or whatever, you pull up your Evernote, you click other school notes, and all the information that you want is here. So those are like the essential ones that I would do. And then there's three more. Um, that are kind of optional, but it's really up to you. I would probably, if you do like going to the sports and you want to know, you know, keep track of what the sports schedules are, again, just go and go to, you know, if you want to see the sports schedule for basketball or football or baseball or whatever sport that you want to watch, I would just put it here. Um, I would also put out your monthly budget depending on if, you know, you are managing a budget. If not, you know, I just said, hey, what else could I put into this Evernote setup that could be valuable for college students managing you know, their life, going to school, doing what they got to do. And then I would also put the vacation time. So, you know, again, on the syllabus or, you know, based on what the school puts out, um, you'll most likely know what your breaks are, when they're happening. And so, again, just more of a reference-based thing. Now, given the fact that it's a pretty simple setup, um, what I would also say is, is that if you haven't watched my other videos, I would highly recommend that you do so. Because, you know, while this is a very simple setup for people, you know, going to school and going to a university to learn whatever they got to learn to do whatever they want to do, I would highly recommend that you go over to youtube.com slash Evernote Scott. And when you get here, you're going to see many more setups similar to what I just what I just showed you. And, you know, you just come down here and this is going to be all of the Evernote videos from beginning to end. So, again... You know, I mentioned that 11 features video in the beginning. This is what I would watch. And then literally you can watch all the videos that I've created from beginning to end. Um, that will give you other possible ideas that you can use Evernote for outside of your personal life in, in school. And I really hope that's valuable for you. Again, there's popular uploads here. Um, if you want to get more done and achieve all your goals in the new year um, or the year coming up or the current year, I put a system together here for you there. Again, this may be valuable for you as college students or university students or someone going back to school as well. Um, you know, I do do setups for online business owners, sales professionals, and then, you know, I kind of organize them based on quick little tips. So some of the videos are, are quick, you know, less than 10 minutes, less than five minutes, less than three minutes, but others are much longer. So I kind of broke it down for you here. And then here's all the uploads, but this is kind of like in reverse chronological order where, you know, this is the most recent upload that I made. And then the, the most, you know, the, the latest one is at the, or the first one that I ever uploaded was at the end. So I would highly recommend you come in here and explore on this page because there's going to be a lot more ideas you're going to cre create for yourself from this. You know, I created this channel to give you the, the way to think about using Evernote. And yes, there are setups, but at the end of the day, I want you to be thinking Okay, this is what I know Evernote can do. This is what I've seen Scott do now. What am I going to do with it to create what I need for my life? And if I'm running a business or whatever. So what I, would, what I recommend that you do, we're, we're at the end of the video, but what I would really appreciate is if you put any questions that you have or if there's anything that I did not address in the comments below. And if you found this video to be very valuable, um, please do share it with your other classmates and your other schoolmates or other people that you feel this would add value to. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I created this channel because it was all about what can I do for other people 
and how can I help them use Evernote to be the most effective person in their life to get the, the highest output for the time that they invest in creating whatever it is. I mean, as it says here, helping you boost your personal productivity and life output. That's really what the essence of why I'm doing this. So I really hope that you found this to be valuable. Um, I really hope that you thumb it up, like this video, subscribe. Um, as you know, if you just either come to the channel and click the little red button here or below the video, you'll see it. Um, and again, feel free to reach out to me. My email is evernotescott at gmail.com. If there's anything that I haven't addressed or there's something completely different that you want me to possibly do a video on in the future, please send me an email to um, evernotescott at gmail.com. And in the subject line, it's always best that you just put how would you and then dot dot dot. So how would you dot dot dot. So for instance, you know, you put you you'd send me the email, you'd put the subject line, how would you dot dot dot. And in your email, you can say, Hey Scott, I am a blah 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 and I do this profession or I do this line of work. You know, here are the challenges that I'm facing, here are the problems that I'm facing, here's what I think I want to use Evernote for. Um, do, can you help me? Um, I'm telling you the the emails that I get for that, it's it really inspires new content that I create. And I really do look forward to hearing from you. And I do read every single one of them. Even though I may not respond to all of them, I do read every single one of them and they do inspire new content. So I really hope that you found this video to be valuable. Um, I really hope that you go and you take action with what I gave you. And I really hope that it helps you be more effective and productive as a student. And by going through all these other videos, it helps you be more productive and effective in other aspects of your life. So. I really, I'm really glad I was able to do this video for you, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Talk to you soon. Bye.